Well, you know, as usual. We come to the shop, we look around, and we're trying to find a piece that's really screaming at us. Turn, do something nice with it. And sometimes that just does not happen. Or you come up across a piece like this, and it's like, okay, what is in here? Uh, a nice little bowl over here. Yeah, it, it could be. Or we let our imagination roam a little bit. And this one will be not what you might be expecting. Let's get started. And to make it a little bit safer, I'm just going to give it a quick cut on an area that I know that I'm not going to be using. So there we go. Okay, so this probably already gave it away, huh? Yes, it's going to be a vase. I always like vases, especially vases that are natural in form and uh, offer you a little bit of unexpected. And that's what this one is going to be doing. Now this bark is definitely going to be flying away. Hello there. What are you making for me? I don't know. A vase maybe. What do you want me to be making for you? A vase sounds good. Okay. Well, so much for this bark. This bark is not going to stay on at all. But, then again, I put on the face shield already expecting that to be the case. Okay, I will feel a, a little bit better putting this up on the jaws.
machines, 600 RPM. Now, because I'm looking at the design and the shape of the wood and what's going on and how much I will be losing if I continue going the path that I'm going. This area right here being so low and uh, what's going on and I'm not even touching anything over here yet where I'm taking a lot over here. I am going to do a slight offset which means I'm going to reach through the bottom. I'm going to rework this slightly but utilize this part of the vase and coming down a little bit and this side well these two sides are very shallow so I don't have much room to play with this that will be part of the the, the design but uh, that gave me quite a bit of a change on the design right now So let's see. I don't care about these little ridges that you're seeing from the bounce over here. I am just shaking it until it becomes smooth to the cut. Heating it up, 800 RPM.
when doing vases. I don't know what your method is of getting to the bottom of them, but uh, this is a tool that if you don't have one, uh, your life is just being a lot harder than where it needs to be. Because this is a tool that really will help you on uh, the piece not flying away. So I don't have a perfect round all the way around, but uh, this, this will stabilize it some. So if I do get a catch, a slight catch, it's really not going to throw the piece way off whack or make the piece fly away and that's the whole thing behind this no guarantees I say that plenty of times uh, there's no such thing as a, a sure thing I got a split going along here and that split would probably, probably be problematic a little bit later on. So rather than it stay there, rub some sawdust, push the sawdust inside and apply some CA. Now sometimes I'll apply CA first, sometimes I will uh, put the sawdust and the the results are kind of the same. Uh, if my gap is small, very small, and I can't get sawdust way inside, then generally I will uh, uh, put the CA in because it's already making, it will be making contact with its side, any wood that's around it. If the gap is a little bit wider, filling it up with CA really doesn't do much good because it pours in there and it really doesn't grip any pieces of the wood there's nothing for it to support so uh, doing that by filling it up first with sawdust you fill up a good size void and then saturating it well you saturating the sawdust and the surrounding wood at the same time so it might be a little bit more economical to do it that way. But, like always, it's, it's how you want to do it.
So I don't know if you will be able to, well, you can see that. Anyway, that's uh, that crack that was going down the piece. And just because it has that does not mean that the piece is not worthy. It definitely is worthy. It's a beautiful piece. The bug activity shows up on this outside edge. I could technically go a little bit deeper, but you know, I, I don't want to. I think that it looks good. I maintained all this natural edge over here. This is where that branch came out, so it has a pit right over there and beautiful coloration throughout the piece. And uh, that's all one can hope for is that at the end that a piece can look as good now any crevices on here I'm not going to worry about I just want to make sure that there's no activity inside of that and there isn't so this piece even though it's a little odd to do a friction polish on it, I'm going to do as much as I can. And this wood will come alive. Generally, I'm not too crazy about gray spalting like this. Uh, because it... it, it well, I mean, sculpting is some sort of a mold to start off with. Uh, but it just, to me, is a little bit more scary, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, so, I'd rather see a, a sculpting with variations, but not necessarily the black coming in. But there's no worry about that. Uh, once this thing, at this point, this thing becomes sealed and it will not deteriorate any further than this. This wood is very dry, so this has no moisture whatsoever. I mean, considering it's Florida, so, uh, but uh, yeah, there's no moisture content on this piece. Actually, most of the spotting is showing up green, which is black and yellow. Uh, we'll make some sort of a green. So the yellow from the wood and the spotting really does beautiful, beautiful job. Time to apply some OB shine juice. Finish of choice. You know, when I tell people I did something a little different, uh, you know, people want to go out and try it. Um, I've done this before. Substituted the uh, the boiled linseed oil uh, for tongue oil. But it really doesn't make much of a difference. Um, and your shine is based actually on it being a little bit heavier on the i'm going to say that the shellac if the shellac is a little bit heavier the piece the material your ob shine juice becomes a little bit tackier um i know the oil makes it spread easier uh, so therefore it's not the oil I know the denatured alcohol helps it dry up faster, so that's not it. It's a little bit heavier. 
uh, if you're doing it and you're not getting good results with it, just go a little bit heavier with the shellac. That's it. Nothing, nothing else really changes. Uh, and that's only something that I'm saying based on my observation. Not that uh, I've done any research on this. So, therefore, it's observation and uh, some, I guess you could say, a little bit of knowledge uh, from working experience. And my work experience has all been related with actually a big part of my life was uh, color, uh, colors and reactions. possibly buff this, these edges. So I will never get a full shine on this piece with this type of a finish. So just do what you can, or in a case where you got something like this, apply a white pounder urethane that also works pretty nice, but I don't have any. So my choices right now are this or lacquer, and lacquer I will only be applying it on the inside, because I will not stick my hand in there right now. So the lacquer will allow me to get it way in there and uh, give this a, a good finish and I'm not going to focus too much on the how shiny it gets because I'll do it wipe, uh, wipe down in a little bit. Beautiful, beautiful piece of wood. And nothing special. It's, it's firewood, it's garbage. Nobody uses this stuff. Uh, and it can be very different from one piece to another. But another, uh, one of the characters that it really has that's pronounced is this uh, zebra striping that you see through. So it really does a remarkable effect okay this piece is ready to come out of the lathe and so I can chew up the bottom
Well, I gotta say, I am pleased with this one. And that just to show you. You know, you either do something that's simple and easy and usable, and nothing wrong with that. But once in a while we come out and we do something that's not usable, but artistic. And that is the case with this piece right here. Bottom, you know, I did have this check that was fairly deep going all the way through. And uh, it showed it going up, but the wood was definitely not going to be wasted because of that. Not when it has all this beauty to offer. You enhance it, you let it become part of all the other character that's going through it. You know, this was uh, right here, is where that stump was out. Uh, the secondary uh, crotch, of course, this was upside down. Uh, so the whole orientation of this and uh, how it turned out really did pay off. And if you notice, uh, halfway through, or well, at the beginning part of the roughing, I actually uh, took it off axis a little bit to give me a little bit more of a vase where I wouldn't come too deep when gouging this up. Well, it would look okay, but it's not what I was going for. Uh, so anyway, this is what makes it worthwhile. The bottom, you know, has all these worm uh, channels and uh, anywhere that was the bark area. So they eat between the bark and the sap and leave this amaze, uh, a maze inside of the piece. So when you're lucky, sometimes you're lucky enough to capture it, quite a bit of it. In this one, I just captured that very top piece. There's a little, uh, or, uh, a little sign of it over there, and there's a little sign of it on the base as well. When you got stuff like that, you definitely cannot save the bark. Here it is. About 10 inches tall. Four inches at the widest point. Not bad. I like it. A couple of little dimples there to remind us of Mother Nature's creation. Thanks again. This is enough turning this week. I've done five this weekend. So I've done quite a bit. Take care. We'll see you next time. Don't forget, subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified when I put pieces up. Take care. Thanks for watching.